while we wait, I will actually show you some things that aren't really um, uh, what I was planning to go tonight, but I thought I'd show it to you. Um, so for, for those who may have been um, uh, in the Vegas conference, one of the things that Lilia talked about, because I've been watching her videos, um, is about making sure you save and back up frequently. Um, so this week, so this is not this is not in 37. What you're looking at here is actually a draft of 38. You can tell because the multi um, previews are all in here, etc. So we, we're not actually looking at 37. But there's a new setting here which uh, allows you to do backup on save. And so when you uh, save a sequence, uh, it will actually automatically back your files up to a backup location. So what you end up with is a, a, hist a running history of every save point. So every time you save it, you actually end up with a new copy of what you saved. So if you ever need to go back and say, oh, you know, I did something a while ago and I wonder what it looked like, in theory, you'll still have it. Um, now that'll get big over time, but to be honest these days, most people's hard disks are so large, it's not such a factor. And you can always turn it off. Um, when 38 comes, you will find it will come with it automatically off. So you'll need to turn it on if that's what you wanted to do. Um, there's also the ability to do an alternate backup location. So if every now and then you want to back up to a memory stick or maybe to your Dropbox, um, you can come in here and, and set an alternate backup location. Um, and then from then on, you can actually do this alternate backup, which is F11. Um, and when you press F11, it will back it up to that alternate location. And so you can keep a, a set of backups on your Dropbox, etc., and not have to go out and remember to copy them across. But that's right. This is kind of relevant. Um, when you've got your, all your models like this, uh, like, like most people, I guess everyone's got a spreadsheet which has all their controllers listed um, and it remembers, uh, so you can remember exactly how everything goes together. Well, there used to be, there, there is the ability to click on a model and right click it and say export it to CSV. Um, but this is really underwhelming. Um, let me show it to you. So here's this, let's call it m.csv. I will open it on desktop. Oh, of course. Of course. Where is it? All files. Hello. There it is. So this is what it gives you. It just dumps out the details about that one model, which is Okay, I guess, but it's not very useful. Um, so under the tools menu, I've also added export models. Um, I'll just call it N. Um, so what this lets you do is it gives you a full list of models. So it'll tell you what the model name was, what type of model it is, uh, what type of strings or bulbs you've got on that model. Gives you a total count down here. Uh, when there's only five, it's no big deal, but if you've got uh, tens or hundreds, it can be difficult. It gives you um, the number of strings, the number of nodes, uh, the channel count, so how many channels that model is set up, um, how you've defined the start channel, what that start channel actually turns into once that um, has been calculated out. But it'll also tell you your controller details. I'm using a null controller, so it just shows me my null controller. But if you set up your E131 controllers, it'll tell you what controller it's on, uh, any description that you happen to have put against it, the IP address, or if it's an LOR control of the COM port that it's attached to, the universe number, and also the channel within the controller. So you'll get basically your entire configuration dumped out to your spreadsheet, and I guess you can do with that what you will. So that, that'll be new in 38 when it comes out. 